So in today's video, we're going to talk about the best goals or investments to make this week. So just for the video does start a quick little ad on a trading service I offer over on Twitch for the cheapest trading guides out there for just £4, four euro, all free with Amazon Prime. You'll receive daily trading and investing guides covering PlayStation, Xbox and PC with an array of methods covering all budgets. Now I've been trading for over 10 years, making over 100 million in multiple different FIFAs. And now for the last four years, I've made 10 million coins in just the first month. So in today's video, we're gonna be going through the best goals or investments to make this week. We're gonna talk about the best players. We're gonna talk about how the cut Z sort of promo reacted last year. We'll talk about what did well out of packs last year, what didn't do well out of packs last year. We're gonna talk about the buy date and uh, what we can expect from the investments. So first off, we're gonna go and compare it to last year. Now, this Golzo team, or this Golzo promo, is basically the exact same as the uh, Trophy Titans we saw last year. The premise is practically the exact same in terms of only being heroes and icons, and that some of the players receive different um, cards, you know, some top-end cards and bottom-end cards. Uh, the main difference is, is that... Um, this year, they've given the heroes two cards, whereas last year's they gave the Iquits two cards. Uh, although, actually, I'd tell a lie. Uh, they did actually give, I think it was like Pritz, uh, a top card and a bottom card. But apart from that, um, it was basically just that. Whereas last year, if we look at the cards, we can see that they gave no heroes double cards, but they gave double cards to Torres, Del Piero, and Lan. That is basically the only difference. Other than that, it's kind of the same promo. So as a result, what we're going to do is we are going to have a little look at what did well last year, what didn't do last, well last year to work out our investment. So I'm sure a few of you guys are interested to know how are cards like Cafu going to perform, Cholton going to perform, um, Campbell going to perform and, you know, maybe Alawari going to perform because some of these real top end cards. Well, sadly to break it to you guys, we see the exact same trend we see happen with every promo and that is that they just drop and drop and drop. Here is uh, Del Piero going out of packs and he just drops and drops and drops. There is basically no money on him. We then move to Fernando Torres, maybe more prolific name, maybe he did better. You can see again here on the Friday, 1.7 and he just proceeded to go down and down and down. Uh, again, here we're happening with Roberto Carlos. We can see, actually, it's a low with Roberto Carlos. Roberto Carlos rebounded like 60k, but then after midweek of that, he then went down and down and down and took no time to go any lower. Right here, this is when he went out of packs, and he just went down 200k. Now, he actually held pretty well, uh, and I think only went down maybe as of like white week one or week two of team of the year, but the overall trend was that he was down. And again, if we go look at Yaya Toure, actually had relatively positive trends. Uh, before he went out of packs, it was 3.5. He then went down to 3.4, but then he did actually hold his value for the um, the first few weeks. And then I think again, like one or two weeks into team of the season, he would then start going down. So the takeaway there was again, no investment in the top end cards. But if you wanted top end cards that held better than the other top end cards, it was actually the heroes who performed a lot better than the icons in terms of holding value, which then would probably equate to someone like Ginola and Alawari outperforming cards like Cholton and maybe Cafu, because again, I guess they were replaced less during team of the season somehow than uh, the, the icons were. So they were the top end cards. Now let's look at something a bit more mid range. For example, maybe let's say the Cholera, uh, maybe the more expensive of JJ Okocha. Uh, and maybe let's say Colin Campbell in the current promo team. So how did the mid-range cards do last year? So we're going to start off here by looking at SEN. SEN uh, came at the back at about 300 to 400. So again, he's not fodder, but neither is he the most expensive card. We can see on Friday he was 300k. And yeah, again, there was literally no rebound on it. He half held his value until like midway through the next week, but there was no profit on it whatsoever. We then look at the uh, more expensive Lan, which is 350k. He did go down to 350 and he did rebound to 400. So again, there would have been 30k per card there, uh, which isn't too bad. Uh, and then again, he held value until it would have been the week after that. I think it would have been pre-team of the season. So basically this Friday, we're going to get team two. But then the weekend after that, we're going to get pre-team of the season, uh, which causes a nice bit of panic. So you can see right here, we went back down from 400, back down there to 320. So lower prices than he even was out of packs. So again, mid-range, a little bit like SEN, um, wouldn't really have been worth investing in. But at the same time, uh, nor is it, you know, nor is he the end of the world. Uh, a little bit worse here on the, uh, the Burr camp. We can see here again on the Friday, 380, and he just kept dropping and dropping. So again, not a very good trend. Uh, and just showing you not all mid-range cards have the same sort of trend. Sadly, there's no mid-range heroes, so we don't really have too much to compare there. But so the top-end cards were all pretty bad, apart from the heroes that were okay. Uh, mid-end cards were okay. 
slight profit to looking at Burkamp, who just kind of crashed because I imagine he would have been less demanded than the Laman SEN. So because he's less demanded but still expensive, he then saw more of a dip. So mid-tier cards, also pretty rubbish. So we've also got a few plebby fodder cards in this uh, team. We've got someone like Dempsey, we've got the 91 Prince, we've got the 94 Prince. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go and look at the cards that weren't really weakenly demanded, but they were fodder. And as a result, how well did the cards who were SBC fodder do last year? So there's a fair few bits of SBC fodder. We've got 89 rated with Lundberg and Donovan. We had 88 rated with Torres and Del Piero. And then we had a 92 Lam and a 93 Casillas and a 93 Closer. So let's go through these guys' trends right now. Start off with these 89s. And if we go down here, we can see on the Friday before they went out of packs, they're 36. They went up to 38, but then didn't really rise until like a week after. And that would have been due to SBCs. So again, didn't really rise out of packs. Only rows were needed for Icon SBCs about a week and a half later. Exact same thing here with Lundberg. 36. They got there to 39, but then back down again and didn't rise until it was needed for SBCs. Uh, you can see the exact same trend happened here with Del Piero. Where again, went out of packs here. Literally didn't rise. Then was needed for Icon SBCs, then rose. Uh, and we can see the same here with Fernando Torres. Uh, on the Friday at 15k. Fernando Torres actually had a little bit of a better rise out of packs, but again, we didn't really see him rise until he was really needed for Icon SBCs. We then moved to Miros and closer, and again, we see the exact same trend as what we saw happen with the cheap players, which is on the Friday, he just kept going down until he was needed for an Icon SBC. Now, this is where the trend gets interesting, because I'd say up until now, the players I've shown you aren't really that demanded. The Donovan wasn't that demanded, the Lundberg wasn't that demanded, neither were the Del Piero and the Torres. But now what we're going to move on to, and same with the closer, but now we're going to move on to was the Larm and the Ike Casillas. And the Larm and the Ike Casillas were substantially more demanded than the players I've shown you up until now. Uh, so even though closer is the same rating than Casillas, what I'm going to show you right now is that he had a different trend. So we move on to Ike Casillas right here, and we can see on the Friday when he went out of packs, he was 91k. So at this point, Miroslav Closer just went down. But what happened to Ike Casillas in the first weekend, he went up 10k. And then the second weekend, he was needed for SBC, so it wouldn't be too fair. We can see in the first weekend, though, he went from 90 all the way up here to 98k. Uh, so again, that's 8k. It'd only be about 5k, but remember, that's not the absolute lows and the absolute highs. And the absolute lows should have been lower than 19k. And we can do the exact same thing here with Larm. We can go to Larm. We can see on the Friday, or on the Thursday, he was 84k, but out of packs, he went up to 97. So we went up 13k a card. Again, doing something Miroslav Closer didn't. And that's because Larm and Casillas were weakenly demanded in compared to Miroslav Closer. So because they're weakenly demanded instead of Miroslav Closer, they're the, basically these are the best performing cards. Which brings us back to the Galozo team. So now what we need to identify is we need to identify who is SBC fodder, but then is also weakenly demanded. So the ones that are SBC fodder is Berbatov, Francescolini, Dempsey, the cheaper culture, um, and then apart from that, we've got 91 Prince, we've got 91 Francesco, we've got 93 Berbatov, and 94 Prince. So other than me just going, yeah, I think he's demanded, yeah, I don't think she's demanded, what we can actually do is we can go over to Footman, we can go Player Game Performance, and click on this. Now what we can do is we can go Version, Squad Scalazzo, and now this is going to show me all the stats for the players in the current promo. So what I can do is I can click and if I wanted to sort through the most expensive, I could sort through the most expensive. Although, yeah, they kind of. Uh, if I wanted to sort through the most goals or, you know, who has the highest goal percentage, I can sort through the highest goal percentage. But the thing we're obviously interested in is the games. And why are we interested in the games? Well, in theory, the more games someone has played with them, the more they're used. Which leaves us with Berbatov, uh, Francesconi and Pritz being the top three. And then going down to the likes of Alonso, Van Persie, Cholera, Cole Alawari. So what's quite interesting about this is sadly um, these guys are min price. But in theory, they'd be down to SBC fodder. So Berbatov at a a what's it called? At a 93 should be getting closer to 70k. And I don't think that'd be too unrealistic because these cards should drop all the way through to Thursday. And Berbatov has been min price since Sunday. So because he's been min price since Sunday and they should drop to Thursday. Going off the presumption they'd be down at about 70, 80k by the uh, by the Thursday Friday isn't too unrealistic. Likewise with the Franco Francesca Coloni, I don't know, he sounds Italian, but he's not. Uh, he's been discarded again since Sunday, and as a 91 rated SBC fodder, he should be all the way down at 
I believe it is about 40 odd K. So you should be down at 40K. And again, by Friday, that is an, un an unrealistic price. And then Pritz, I'll be honest with you, is kind of SPC fodder already. But let's say we're talking about Kotcha and we're looking at players who don't need price range updates. Well, when were the cheapest? Uh, when were 89s the cheapest? And in general, these the cheapest last week. Well, I went and picked up loads myself. Uh, and the cheapest they were was basically after Division Rival Awards. We can see here Thursday, 2 p.m to after marquee matchups. And then they rose around about 10 p.m. Which means you basically have about 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. to get these cards and deals. Uh, I can show you this happening in the same with Dan Juma. We can see right here. Sorry, you can see right here. This is uh, where Division Rivals are. 24K before Division Rival Awards. Then they go down to 23K after. Uh, and even after marquee matchups, they did go down there to 22. So again, I'd say between about 9 a.m. to about 10 p.m. So uh, yeah, I believe that would be about that. Now, when are we gonna go and sell these cards? Um, the likes of Alba and Dan Juma and that lot actually peaked on the Friday evening. So I'd say if you want to play it nice and safe, I'd say Friday evening. And if the players are SBC fodder by Friday evening, which I really don't think they will be, not the ones I've recommended, then what you can do is just wait till the Sunday icon SBC. But yeah, if we look at like some of the meta cards from last week, they peaked Friday evening, Saturday midday. So uh, to play it safe, I'd go and sell probably about Friday 10pm because you've got four hours of people buying after they go out of packs. Uh, whereas you don't have to worry about the content coming on the Saturday, the Sunday, or any of the leaked content. And that is going to be about that. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video.